Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today on Customer States What? Well, we're doing a home visit. We have a 2013 Ford Edge Sport with a 3.7 liter engine. What are we doing today? Well, we already did the rear brakes. We're up to the front brakes. And yes, I am working on the ground. So, you know what comes next. Let's get into this. Oh, you know what we should have done first? We probably should have broke the... Oh, no, we have an electric I did. Gun. No, I broke them. I broke, oh, you broke all the ones free? Yep. All right, all right. Even better. Even better. Very good. Oh, pinch welds are not looking that good? <laughs> no. Yeah, you want to see some flavor? Oh, that's not that bad. We've seen much, much worse. But you can see where it's already starting to, like, bend a little bit. Yeah. That's from that's... so many lifts. Yep going on that one point but yeah that's that's actually not that bad we, we've seen a whole lot worse and that exhaust system we've seen a whole lot worse well the exhaust got replaced because she got rear-ended oh yeah oh yeah so the yeah it, it probably from here back yeah. yeah all right very good so you know man always a couple number of years ago there was a thing about the jack stands you always want to inspect your welds to see if they're starting to split because uh, if they start to split, that means they're starting to fail. Uh, and one thing we were admiring here with this fine piece of uh, Pittsburgh quality is this clean weld. I mean, never seen anything so smooth. At least it's painted. Just on this side. No snap-on tools today. These are the poverty tools. <laughs> they still work, though. They still work. I'm sure somebody noticed that we're not using any snap-on today. Well, no, we are. We are. Hold on, hold on. We have this guy right here. Our three-eighths. Oh, wow. Ugh. On the struggle bus we go. Those are loose. Need the bungee cord? Yeah. What I'm doing there is I'm just compressing the piston enough to where I could take the caliper off. Do one of these. Here we have our double piston compressor a lot easier than the uh, wood block yeah single pistons I'll usually just use a pry bar put that up there we could bungee that right there for safety because we're gonna knock that rotor off eventually with a hammer very good See our brake pads, they're actually kind of healthy, but there is some minor abnormal wear here. As you can see, the inner pad has maybe roughly two to three millimeters less, but they're moving freely. The pads, I mean, the, excuse me, the pins moved freely, so that's good. But you know what? We got the parts and we're going to replace them. Also, as you can see, the striations on the pads here. You got one here and one there. That's from the rust ridge on the rotor right here and right there and that can and will cause a brake noise wait i am going the right way right yeah uh, lefty, lefty. no i gotta go up with it i want to go this way i want to go this way all right now those are broken free now guys, when you go to break the caliper bolts free, and I'm talking about the big guys over here, don't just go to break the bolt free. You want to go through. You want to have a good follow through and make sure that the socket doesn't come off the bolt and also don't smash your knuckles into the freaking ground. All right, now that everything is off, we're gonna clean 
the surface here. We're going to clean the caliper bracket and prep everything for installation of the new parts. Very good. All right, so now that we have the caliper bracket here, we have all new shims or fit kit for the new pads. So we take all that old stuff out. We wire brush in here, flip it around. You also want to inspect on the inside of the caliper here if you have any flavor and or slash rust buildup. That can cause a noise when the rotor rotates. It can touch the caliper bracket. So always inspect here and inspect right over here as well. Very good. All right, so now that we have the caliper bracket clean, what I like to do is with the grease, to split this in half. You have the outside and you have the inside. Same on this side, you have the inside and you have the outside. What I'll do is I'll put grease on the outside of it over here and over here. The reason why is because when you put the new shim kit on, that grease is gonna wanna spread out. And you don't want it to spread out so much to make contact on the rotor and contaminate the rotor. So that's why we put grease on the outsides of that area. All right, so now that we have the caliper bracket in hand and half dressed, there is a left and a right clip. You can mess these up. As you can see, these little tabs right here, that goes facing the outside, that goes facing the outside. Now this side here, you can see now right where I put the grease on this half and on that half. So now we're going to install the rest of the clips and install this bracket into the vehicle. Very good. So now that we have all four shim kits installed, same rule applies with the grease. You put a little bit of grease on the outside half on each area. And when we go to install the brake pads, we're going to also install a little bit of grease on the brake pad where it slides in to the fit kit. Very good. Oh, one other thing guys, I did turn the wheel to give me better access to these bolts to break free. This way I was able to put the breaker bar all the way sticking out of the fender instead of freaking fighting the fender. Ask me how I know. So now that we clean the hub area, what I like to do, not a lot of people do, but I like to do, is I don't like to screw the next guy. I put a little speckle of uh, high temp anti-seize. Now what this will do is it'll help the rotor actually come off the hub because corrosion is going to happen back here but you want to minimize it by just putting a light coat of high temp anti-seize there. High temp, the reason why, well brakes get hot so you use the high temp anti-seize. Now when I install the rotor sometimes depending on the vehicle I like to install a lug nut just to keep it in place. Sometimes you may have to put two lug nuts or sometimes you may have to put washers underneath the lug nut because the lug nut is not as long as the stud. So now what this does, when we put on our bracket, the rotor is not going to be flopping on us. Very good. Another tip and trick guys, before you install the brand new pads, make sure that there is not an inside and an outside or an inboard and an outboard pad. In our case, all four pads are identical, so there is no proper way. Now, for vehicles that would have a brake pad sensor, hold that, there would be a little hole right here on one side and not the other, and when that happens, that would be the side for the sensor. Also, what we noticed here that this shim is kind of loose. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bend this tab right here just a little bit further down just so it holds that much better. Very good. So here we have the brake pad and what we're going to do is we're going to grease right in here right where the caliper sits or excuse me where the pad sits in the caliper. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, on the side. This face here, yeah. Okay, all right, so let me, uh, let's fill that again, and I'll, uh... All right, take two. We're gonna grease in here, across that. Yep. Yep. And that's it. Now flip the pad. We're gonna do the other side. Pay special attention to not coming in contact with the actual brake pad material. 
Very good. That's it. Yep, right there, get that one started. Maneuver the bracket if you have to. Good, we didn't have to draw hair around it or anything. Here's the other bolt. Very good, and this is where having this lug nut comes into play because he could be fighting the rotor as he's trying to put the bracket on but the rotor is staying in place and he's able to thread in the caliper bracket bolts very good right. give it the old German elbow German torque brake pad very good inner brake pad very good now we gotta uncoil our caliper <laughs> from the strut now for grease on the caliper I like to put grease on the fingers that come in contact with the pad here and a little bit on the back of the pad where the pad comes in contact with the caliper so I'll just put a little bit there a little bit there a little bit there and then a couple of circles here because it's a double piston let me slip the caliper on make sure not to crush the rubber boots for the caliper pins then the pin that we already greased start that we take our second pin a little bit of grease make sure your boot is not in the way because it is right now come on ah. go in your hole all right, why isn't it going in? Hey, look what I found, guys. I guess there's a difference between the bottom pin and the top pin. The bottom pin is a whole lot freaking smaller. So what I was trying to accomplish here, I was trying to put this big thing in a hole that wasn't big enough. And yes, that most definitely is a giggity. I, I, I really don't work on Fords much, guys. I didn't, yeah. And I'm not the one that took it apart. It was freaking DJ John Force over there. Flex head's the best thing you can ever have. If you're a home DIYer that does this just every once in a while, the one tool to invest in is a 3 8 flex head. You will use it all the time when you're working with, on With or without the handle? You, you like the handle? I right? like the handle, but you got me this as a gift. So figured you knew what you were doing well I, I make it look like I know what I'm doing I do that pretty well so guys something that we did notice and we kind of knew it was gonna happen but we weren't sure if it was going to but our brake master we did take the cap off because we did know that the brake fluid was gonna overflow we do have something under the vehicle to catch whatever excess fluid just be aware that pending on the brake level on when you started the vehicle or when you started the job it might just overflow. Now, now, the fluid will go back down once we pump up the brakes and it takes up whatever space in each caliper on all four corners. So always, when you're done with the brakes, make sure your brake fluid level is at proper level. I repeat, make sure the brake fluid is at proper level when you are complete with the job. All right, guys, after every brake replacement, after you put the wheels on, and the car is on the ground the first thing you do the absolute first thing you do before you even start the car you pump your brakes up because I've had younger technicians in the shop do brakes and then start the car 
And I know for a fact that they didn't pump the brakes because there was a high idle when they start. And guess what happens? They put the car into gear and they're like, oh, sh and they have no brakes and they crash into something. So our brake level, remember how it was overflowing? Well, since we pumped our brakes back up, it's right where it needs to be. So guys, that's what that's what is involved in front brakes on a 2013 Ford Edge Sport. Now, we have something over here that might be in a future video. But until then, we have this guy. So tell me about your truck, tell me about what you do. Hey guys, uh, it's great to be a guest here on Customer States What? And uh, this is a 2013 6.2 liter Raptor that uh, I just picked up and hopefully it's gonna be my truck for life. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to feature it in a future video. Uh, other than that, I'm a music producer, I'm a DJ. Uh, my name is DJ John Force. And uh, I have a channel where we do hard house music. It's not for everybody, but uh, if you like, um, you know, dance music, we stream live every week and we put uh, our streams on a YouTube channel. And uh, we'd love to have you as a guest. So come see us if you want. Oh yeah, and no, I will provide the link in the description below. And until then guys, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for further content.